Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about the transmission in the Subaru. When I first got it, um, if you remember, it had a WRX 5-speed with PPG gears in it that had a messed up second gear. Now today I'm going to go back, use some footage I created a long time ago, but I never posted and a lot of people have been asking about the transmission, so I figured it's a good time to post this video. And I'm going to actually tell you, go into details of how I basically swapped in a six-speed STI transmission in this car for $2,000. I'm sure some of you noticed in the first video that there was a weird center console thing going where you couldn't see the shift knob and the boot was covering everything and it wasn't fitting right. Well, that's because the car originally came with a five-speed WRX transmission explained in the first video and I recently remedied that off-camera. We did it um, when I first got the car because there was no second gear. Yeah, I'll show you second quickly. Stay out of that gear. Go back into third. Fourth. This has now a STI Spec C six speed transmission in it and I actually found the transmission on Craigslist. It was listed about 20 minutes from my house. I got a smoking deal on the transmission. The guy just wanted it gone. He didn't even know what it was worth and he didn't even know it was a Spec C. The difference with the Spec C is there's actually cooler lines that come out of the transmission so you can actually have a, the Spec C's, STI's had a transmission cooler. So instead of the blind coming out and going back in the transmission, there is a cooler that you can install, which I just routed back into the transmission. I've talked to rally teams and they said they don't even run coolers on these transmissions, so I didn't see the need. Now the story of putting it in, me and my dad spent a long time. The car was in a garage about an hour and a half away from my house and we went down there a couple hours a week, if that. Maybe once a month we'd go down there and just work on it for a few hours. Um, Pulling it out wasn't too hard. Um, the transmission dropped. Once we got the one problem, the transmission came right out. Now the one problem was there is a shift fork and there's a little cap on that shift fork on the side of the transmission. You have to pull the cap out and then there's like a 10 millimeter bolt that you back out and then the shift fork just drops and it's not engaged in the clutch. If it's engaged, you're not gonna pull the transmission off. So we pulled and pried for hours on this thing, trying to get it off, and once we realized that cap had to be removed, we figured out our problem. The problem was another problem, that that cap was completely fused to the side of the transmission. There was no way we were gonna pull this thing off. I mean, we had a pry bar on there, we had heat, I put a torch on there, this thing was not budging. So we gave up, came back home, uh, a couple weeks later, we went down there again, and I removed all the intercooler piping. It just cleared that whole area from above in the engine bay, put a huge breaker bar on this thing, and we just, we, the impact gun wouldn't even take it out. And we just put the big breaker bar on it, and finally it snapped, and that was the sound of relief, because it was the hardest thing we did, was just removing that little cap for the shift fork. Um, now, I, the car, when I bought it, came with a bunch of extra parts. The car, the whole trunk, the whole rear seat was full of boxes that the guy I bought it from had just accumulated over the years of working on Subarus for so long. So in that box was a shorter drive shaft. And he told me, he goes, if you ever need to go six speed on the car, here's an extra drive shaft which probably saved me about a hundred bucks. Um, so I went with this, I went with the tranny. I kind of did it the cheaper way because I just wanted the six speed transmission in the car. I didn't care about having, you know, every single thing on the car updated to STI. So what we did, we kept the WRX axles and the WRX hubs that were on the car because it has the Willwood big brakes in the front and the rear. And we don't want to change the hubs out. I don't want to change the, the brakes and go Brembo and all that because that's a whole nother thing and these brakes are amazing. I've never been in a car that brakes so well. So we kept the rotors, the hubs, everything, WRX, the axles. The only thing we had to buy was the stubs. Now, depending on if you have a male or female transmission, um, you, have, you might have to buy axle stubs that go in the transmission. So I even utilized the WRX uh, axles with the STI stubs and you have to buy the seals as well because the seals are a little different. 
Um, we also, we already had the WR, the sorry, the STI drive shaft, so that bolted right in. Uh, the main thing though is the rear end. You have to pay attention to the the, the gear ratio. Um, you just look at the tag on your transmission and you can look it up online. There's a couple charts and it shows you what gear ratio it is, which as a matter of fact, I had the, the same, the exact needed differential already in the car. So just axle stubs, shorter drive shaft, and it went right in. One way to save a lot of money when swapping in an STI six-speed transmission is to reuse the WRX five-speed flywheel pressure plate and clutch disc. It is a little bit smaller. I think it's only 20 millimeters smaller. Um, let me know if I'm wrong, but the WRX is a little bit smaller than the STI, but it will fit inside the transmission. I reused my light and flat, my lightweight flywheel, the pressure plate and the clutch from the WRX transmission into the STI six speed. You can't go the other way. You can't use STI clutch in a WRX transmission because it's too big, it won't fit. So that's another way to save actually quite a bit of money because the STI six speed uh, clutch setup with a good with a flywheel, even an OEM flywheel, is gonna run you well over a thousand dollars. We did a new throwout bearing and the pilot bearing. Uh, we did when we were in there we also did a, a rear main seal which took three different times because there was a little nick on part of the block that kept catching and tearing it so I'm glad we figured that out before we put it all back together but we uh, did the rear main seal then there's a plate right next to the rear main seal uh, it's like an access cover that has to be updated because they used to be plastic and they get hot and cold and so many times that they crack so we actually updated that to the newest um, pressure plate with the bolts that go all the way around it and you just silicone it and stick it on I am still looking for the six-speed STI uh, gear shift cover, the plastic center console with the aluminum ring and the boot. I do need that piece. If anyone has one laying around, let me know in the comments down below or email me directly. I also need to mention the DCCD uh, is not wired up to this car. I do have a controller. It's not wired in yet. I think it's a spider unit uh, to control how much power goes from the front wheels to the back. So that'll be fun once it's installed. Um, It'll just lock at whatever it is from the factory. So it could be like, you know, 60-40 or 55-45. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the description of the box below that'll show you what your transmission is. You just look it up by the code on the transmission. It's the same chart that shows you what the final drive is. So when you're gonna match it to the rear end, you need to make sure that the, they're the same. There was one more thing that we actually had to do to the car before we can get the transmission in. One more thing we had to replace, and that was the trans mount. So um, the WRX, trans mount is a little thicker, the STI is a little thinner, so we went with group N because we already have the group N motor mounts in there and when we were putting that in there everything started to fit fine but once we brought the transmission up into the chassis there we didn't have a lift or anything we we're doing this on our back me and my 65 year old dad were, were doing a transmission swap on our backs in the garage on jack stands you know a foot and a half off the ground barely enough room so bringing it up into the car it wasn't the the transmission bolts were stripped out and now these are little nut certs that are welded into the unibody you can't just pull out the nut put a new nut in I mean these nuts are welded into the unibody so that was a big problem because the transmission mount it's like hundred and something foot-pounds or 90 foot-pounds of torque that you have to do and it just kept stripping and stripping the reason those bolts were stripping was because the Subaru manual that I was using online was inaccurate the bolts are actually the subframe bolts that hold uh, the transmission in the car. It's a big H or I-beam subframe that the transmission mount bolts to that actually cradles and holds the transmission in the car. The specs were 103 or 105, I think is what I was using. Subaru later went back and updated that because one side of the subframe was like 60 foot pounds. The other side was 100 and something foot pounds. So I should have known that should have sparked interest to do some research, but I didn't. I was in a hurry to get it back in. So make sure you do your research. Look at the manual. I think I ended up putting like 60 something foot pounds on um, all of the bolts holding that subframe in and it seems to be doing just fine. Probably the hardest part of the job, I know there was a couple other hard parts, but the most scariest part of the job was we actually had to cut into the floorboard of the car. Now it's behind the ECU, behind the carpet. There was just a little bit, a little square, about two inches by two inches that we just cut with a circular saw 
um, a, a, a grinder, the wheel of death, and we just pulled it up and the nut was right there and we just knocked it off with a chisel and I found out, the, I found a right nut to fit it in there and we just drove the bolt up from the bottom, torqued it down and then we just hammered that little doggy door back down. I put a little seam sealer in there and covered it up. That way there's no water getting in it but uh, it wasn't easy and it was a little scary getting it done. But we got the job done. It has an STI six-speed transmission in it which completely changed the way this car drives. I mean it's, it's JDM so it's really short gear ratios which is fun for cruising around town. It's not an Autobahn highway cruiser that's going to do 150, 160 without breaking a sweat. I mean it's a low, real low gear ratio uh, transmission. But that's another reason the car needs to be tuned is because now that the gear ratios are different the engine's operating a little bit differently with that different final drive in it, it, it really needs to be tuned. I also want to give you a little recap on the pricing because I know this is getting a little convoluted um, going back and forth between the past and the present. So the Subaru transmission only cost me $2,000. Now um, I know there's a few other things that I did to it, the stubs, the seals, rear main seal, the transmission mount, the cover plate, pilot throw out bearing, uh, I used Motul fluid which is really expensive but it's really good. Um, also I did little odds and ends like axle nuts and cotter pins but I did end up selling the 5 speed transmission mount that was in the car, it was group N. I also sold the short throw shifter which if you saw in the video in the, uh, in the clip in the beginning of the video there was a Cobb short throw shifter for the 5 speed. I actually ended up selling that. So I got about a couple hundred bucks for those few parts. I also still have a WRX 5 speed transmission with a messed up second gear that I can sell. I also have the uh, drive shaft that we're not using anymore and the car actually came with two differentials. So it came with two R160 uh, rear ends which is a WRX base. It's not the R180 of the STI that I wish I had in the car but I don't really think it makes much of a difference. We'll see how well this one holds up. Um, I'm going to sell one of those because there's two. I got two of them uh, with different gear ratios. The, the guy just included it with the sale because he said you know if you need the other gear ratio here's the rear end that will work. So I think I'm going to be well under the $2,000 mark when it's all said and done including reusing the WRX uh, clutch setup and flywheel. Um, so I think this is probably the cheapest way you're going to ever do an STI six speed swap. I mean for under $2,000 I'm running a six speed, fine by me. Be discouraged. I mean if I can do it, if me and my dad, 65 year old man can put a STI six speed into this Subaru, swapping it out with a, from a five speed, I think anybody can do it. You just got to take your time, do your research, at least know what you're getting yourself into, have the time and the space to do it because that's one thing I don't have anymore is much time or space. Um, but you can save a lot of money. It doesn't have to be a five, six, seven thousand dollar swap. You can uh, really utilize those old WRX pieces with the STI six speed and at the end of the day if you're not tracking it hard and pushing a lot of horsepower you might not see uh, that much difference. So please if you enjoyed this video hit the thumbs up down below. Get the YouTube al algorithm going. Um, it really helps the channel. Also subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Road Patina. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.